Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service. It's great to have you with us and today I'm really pleased to say is an all age service. So there's no Kingdom Kids, there's no Delve this week, but instead families come together and worship together and celebrate God's word together. There's no better thing to do than to share God's, God's word, whether it's with a fellowship of people or whether it's your, your own family in your own house. Um, even if you're sitting this morning alone listening to this message, then you know that you sit not alone, but in the presence of God. So I'm going to pray for us to open this service and then we're going to have some sung worship and then we're going to explore the theme of light because today is a day when we launch our week of light, taking the light of Jesus out into our online community in Bitteriki. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this morning and we thank you, Lord, that as we've just said, this is a family service. And Lord, we thank you this morning that we remind ourselves that we are all part of your family. We are all part of the body of Christ. We give thanks, Lord, that, that Jesus is the head of that body, that he has all authority given to him, that he's given us the responsibility of being the beacons that shine for him in the world today. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot hide. Father, we, we give thanks for the truth of those words, for the truth that Jesus is the light of the world. We give thanks, Father, that there's a team of people that have put together this, this week of light that's going to be taking place over the, the coming days. Father, we pray that, that as people engage with, with the content, as people watch the videos that are going to be put together, that they will engage with you, that they will learn about you and that they will enjoy coming to know you. So Father, bless this morning, bless us as we worship you now and be with us in our homes, in our hearts and in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Noah built the most enormous boats that kept the birds and animals afloat. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Noah lived his life for him. Moses led his people through the sea Taking them away from slavery The Lord was good, the Lord was strong And Moses lived his life for him Oh, 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 oh thank you, oh, thank you That all through history you were faithful Thank you, oh, thank you but you are just the same when it comes to me When it comes to me David fought Goliath and he won A humble shepherd boy became a king The Lord was good, the Lord was strong And David lived his life for him Daniel was inside a lion's den But God brought him to safety once again The Lord was good, the Lord was strong And Daniel lived his life for him Oh, thank you, oh, thank you That all through history you were faithful Thank you, oh, thank you that you are just the same when it comes to me When it comes to me Jesus died to take away our sin So we could get to know our God again the Lord is good, the Lord is strong, and we will live our lives for Him. Oh, 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 thank you, oh, thank you, that all through 
traffic, you are in the quiet, you are in the shadows, you are in the spotlight, you are in the traffic, you are in the quiet, you are in the shadows, you are in the spotlight, oh, oh, where can I run away to, oh, oh. Not escape you, oh oh. Even in the darkness, oh oh. I can never hide from you, you, you. You are everywhere, you, you. It's always good to share a time of sung worship together and we thank you to our worship team for putting together the worship songs this morning. Now as I said at the start of this service, this week we are going to be launching our Week of Light. Every day there's going to be a new activity that goes on our website and on Facebook and through various other social media channels. There's going to be um, either songs or games or reflections or challenges and it's going to be something where hopefully all ages will have the opportunity to engage with the material that we've put together. It's an exciting thing to do, it's a good thing to do because for so many people at the moment the world feels quite quite dark. So we thought it's really appropriate to have a week of light. But of course, a week of light isn't a new idea. Indeed, if you go back to Genesis chapter 1, right at the beginning, the first recorded words that God spoke over the world was, let there be light. And for the next seven days, his first week of light was pretty impressive. He, he separated the heavens and the earth. He put the stars in the sky, made the fish for the, for the sea and the birds in the air. And he made animals and plants and trees and all the rest of it. And eventually he made Adam and Eve. He made us, mankind, the race that we carry on today. Now, our week of light might not quite achieve those heights, but it's still going to be pretty good. Light is a theme that runs throughout scripture. Light is used to explain so many different ideas, so many different aspects of God's character. Um, it features in so many parables or stories. So I'm going to set you a challenge. Hopefully you've got pen and paper nearby. If you haven't, hopefully you've got a good memory. Because what I want you to do in one minute is list as many Bible stories or parables or instances where light is mentioned. So you've got one minute, starting now. So there we go, the one minute is over. How many did you get? <laughs> I wonder if many of you are sitting there shouting at the screen at the moment. I can't hear you, this was recorded a couple of days ago. But still, never mind. I hope that you actually started thinking about Bible stories and thinking about all the different times where light is mentioned in scripture. Um, 
I haven't double checked this, but I am told that there are 232 references to light in the New International Version translation of the Bible. 232, so if anyone got, you know, anywhere over 200 is pretty good really, but I'm guessing that's unlikely seeing as you only had 60 seconds in which to list them all. But I think, I hope that you would have noticed in that, in that exercise that actually there is a surprising number of references to light in the Bible. Maybe the most famous one comes when Jesus says, I am the light of the world in John chapter 8 verse 12. He points to himself and he says, I am the light of the world. Now, I said earlier on that darkness hides things. Light reveals them. And so when Jesus calls himself the light of the world, he says that there is no darkness in which to hide. Everything should be revealed. Everything can be seen through Jesus. Jesus described himself as the light. So what does that mean? When we, when we listen to that, what do we think of? For some of us, we might think of light being a beacon guiding us to where we should be, or a lamp showing the path that we should follow to stop us stumbling or falling. For some, you might think of a lighthouse on the edge of a cliff, shining to show people keep away from danger, to protect ships out at sea. Whatever you think of, light is a really complex thing. It's made up, not just of one colour, but light, the light that we have around us at the moment, is made up of loads of different colours. Now at this point, what I was going to do was do an experiment. And you might want to try this at home. I've tried it and I had zero success. It was a complete failure. But there is an experiment where you can get a bowl of water and put a mirror half in, half out of the water. Take a torch and shine the light through the water onto the mirror. The light, if you hold up a white sheet of paper or do it against a, a white wall, you'll see that the light is actually separated as it goes through the water. All the different shades of different color in the light is separated out and you get a rainbow effect on the wall. Now, as I say, I've tried that and it failed so miserably that I thought I'm not gonna humiliate myself in front of the entire church by failing in one of my experiments. So instead, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. What I've got here is a rainbow lamp. And what you'll see when we turn this on is that as light is shone down onto a curved mirror, we see the whole spectrum of different coloured light revealed as those lights are split out. It's a thing of beauty. But you see, when we see a rainbow as Christians, what does it make us think of? Well, at the moment, it might make us think of the NHS. That's, been, that's what the rainbow has been used for this past year. That's been the, the overriding rainbow theme. But actually, the rainbow originally was mentioned way back in Genesis. You remember the story of Noah's Ark? When Noah built the ark that God had told him to build and the, the world was flooded because it wasn't going how God wanted it to be. It wasn't, it wasn't um, people weren't acting the way that God wanted them to act. They were turning against him and rebelling. And he said, we need to start again. But Noah and his family were the only ones who were saved on that ark. And afterwards, God made a promise to Noah. In Genesis chapter 9, we read God making it clear to Noah. He says, I establish my covenant with you. That's another word for promise. Never again will all life be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again will, will there be a flood to destroy the earth. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, 
I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all the living creatures of every kind on earth. So when we see a rainbow as Christians, it, 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 it's like Pavlov's dog. It rings alarm bells. We think, wow, that's, that's, such a, that's such a significant sign from God. We thank God for the promise that he made to us. And it's a promise that he keeps. You see, when Jesus calls himself the light of the world, Jesus is saying, I've come to reveal the world in all its glory, in all its beauty. I've come to take away the darkness. You see, darkness comes at night. And often it's at night when you can lay awake worrying, when the anxiety kicks in, when you suddenly feel very alone. I want you to now listen to a quote from a psalm which shows us that the darkness won't last forever. Take a listen to this. As the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I'd like to offer my thanks to Joe Biden for taking the time to do our reading this week for us. But joy comes in the morning. Darkness doesn't last forever. Jesus is the light of the world who will shine into our lives if we invite him to. And so this week, as we explore the light of Jesus, as we explore our week of light, I invite you to come on a journey with us, to engage in all the videos, all the activities, all the reflections, all the songs, everything that is being put together, everything that's being offered to our church community and to our wider community, to come and explore the light of Jesus and see what joy you find in him. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that we can put together this week of light. And Father, we thank you that when we look at your word time and time again, we see your, your desire to shine your light into our lives, to brighten us up, that we may be beacons that reflect your glory and your love and your joy to all those that we meet. Father, we know that we don't always get that right, but we know also that you are a God of love. And we thank you that you call us to follow you and to shine as we reflect your goodness and your glory. Be with us, we pray this week. May we walk in your light. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Nothing can separate Even if I ran away Your love never fails I know I still make mistakes But you have new mercies for me every day Your love never fails You stay the same through the ages. Your love never changes. There may be pain in the night, but joy comes with the morning. And when the oceans rage, I don't have to be afraid because I know. Deep, but I'm not alone here in these open seas Cause your love never fails The chasm was far too wide I never thought I'd reach the other side But your love never fails
for my